Well, hello, scrappers. Welcome back to my channel. Now, here's the scenario. The other day, you did a big e-scrap pickup at some major mega corp XYZ corporation, okay? And you came away with a whole truckload of laptop computers. And some of them are in pretty good condition, and you're thinking about reselling them. How do you get into them? How do you... Uh, make them so whoever you sell them to can get into them and use them. You may think you're stuck because you don't know the passwords to get in. You know, you, you can't do anything with the machine, but you're not stuck. There are ways to get in here and make this machine yours. I'll let you know a little secret. I haven't shelled out actual money on a new computer in probably 15 years or more. I just take the nicest computers that I find scrapping and make them mine. You know, maybe upgrade them a little bit. Put a little extra RAM in them. But hey, I've got RAM out the yin-yang from scrapping other machines. Put a bigger hard drive in. But i got lots of hard drives too, you know. You know, make them monster machines, basically. But first you got to get past the login. I'll show you how to do that. Well, that's what I've been doing for the past two days. And I wish I'd sh filmed this earlier because I've gone through all of the Windows 10 and Windows 7 computers and already done them. So I'm down to the XP computers. I wish I'd thought to film it earlier because it'd probably be a little bit more, um, a little bit more relevant on newer machines. But the process is pretty much the same. Okay, so this computer used to belong to XYZ Corporation. And, uh, you know, they've got it locked down pretty good, at least as good as they can with the Windows uh, XP. You, so you do your Control-Alt-Delete, and, you know, you get a warning message that, you know, this is authorized users only, yada, yada, yada. Okay, but you go through that. And then, okay, you don't have a password for any of the users on this system. How do you get into it? Okay, and it's, um, well, there's a way to get into it. What you need is, well, first off, your computer has to have either a USB port or a, a, a DVD or CD player. If it has that, you need this, which is called Hiren's Boot Disk and Offline Password Editor. Just do a Google search for it. I'll put a link up right now. Okay, so once you've got this, and you have physical access to a machine, you own it. You just have to go through a few steps to get there, okay? So, what we're going to do first off, is we're going to put that disc in the CD player on this machine. So we're going to put this disc in. And we're going to reboot this computer, and we're going to force it to boot off of the DVD disc, okay? So, let's select the shutdown option here. This only works if the computer's been shut down properly. It will complain if it hasn't been shut down properly. So we're going to shut it down. And then once it's shut down, we'll start it up and force it to boot off of that disk. You can also do this with a USB thumb drive. Same thing, you put the same software on the thumb drive, force the computer to boot off the thumb drive, it works just the same way. Now let's restart this computer and we're going to force it to boot off of the DVD drive. Usually, since this is a Dell, usually it's F2, F12, so just be ready to press them after you power it up, because sometimes you don't have a lot of time See, okay, F12 was boot options. So, while it's thinking about it and coming up, I'll tell you, the, uh, the IT admins at XYZ Mega Corporation, where I got all these laptops from, they know about Hirons too. Because this is my Hirons disk right here. I already had one. The one I'm booting this thing up with, that was in one of the machines when I got it. They obviously were trying to fix something on the machine because there's a lot of tools on the disk besides just a password changer. Um, they were obviously trying to fix it.
forgot to take the disc out of the drive, put the computer on the shelf, and eventually gave it to me. So now I've got two copies of it. And I think their copy is newer than mine, because it does more. You might have to do a little bit more than that to get it up to boot up off of the DVD drive. You may have to select that option. You may have to even go into the BIOS and modify it so that uh, booting off the DVD drive is the first option. But eventually you'll figure out a way, or, or from the thumb, boot from the thumb drive, one or the other. Okay, so once you've done that, you come down here to Offline NT2000 XP Vista 7 Password Changer. This works on 10 too, by the way, even though it says 7, it works on 10. And hit Enter. And it's going to give you some booting options here. I just usually hit Enter, and that works fine. I haven't had to put any special options in. And this is going to take a little while, depending on the speed of the machine. A lot of stuff's going to scroll by. A lot of stuff's going to scroll by, just ignore it. And then finally, once it stops scrolling, it's going to come down here and it's going to ask you which partition do you want Do you want to look on for the, uh, the password information. Uh, this one only has one single partition on it. Um, usually, more modern computers will have several partitions, at least two. Um, and you'll want the the big, bigger partition generally. His small partitions just sort of like got a bootloader on it. So you generally want the bigger partition. In this case we've only got one, so we'll put in partition one. It's already defaulting to that, but I'll type in one and put it in there. And it's going to look around and try and find the Windows System 32 um, directory. And there it is, Windows System 32 config. It found it. Uh, is that the directory you want to look at for the registry yes so we'll just hit enter and now it's giving us some more options um, what I want to do is password reset that's what I want to do is password reset so and that's that's the default option that's what most everybody chooses so hit enter um, so edit user data and passwords again one that's the default option again we'll go there so here we go. Um, it looks like here's the users for the physical machine. Now this machine was on a network and most of the people would do a network login but there's usually at least one or two physical, though there have to be one or two physical users of the machine in order to um, you know manage it and actually get it up and running on the network. So yeah so we've got uh, this this guy right here, I don't even know how to pronounce that, but he's a user. Um, so let's see. Yeah, in fact, he's he's defaulted here. The one they're saying, do you want to change his password? So let's see. He's not disabled and he's not locked out. So yeah, what I would like to do is yes, change his password. So. You can't really change the password. What you can do is clear it, make it blank. So, yeah, so we will do that. We will make it blank, option one. So, okay, so we blanked this password. Let's take a look at that list again and see what it looks like now. And you do that, you just hit period and enter. So now you can see his password is blank. We can also promote him to be an administrator, which is very useful once we log in and start messing around with the computer because we want to you know, dump all the corporate crap off of it. Uh, we want to get rid of all the old data. Uh, we want to set up new users, that kind of thing. So we can promote him to an administrator. So um, option up here, three, promote user, make user an administrator. So let's see here. Let's quit from this, which is exclamation point. And then we'll go back into edit user data and passwords, one. And this time we will yeah, we'll pick pick that guy again. And this time we'll pick option three to promote him to administrator. So option three. They always tell you this can result in damage. But hey, you know, I have no access to this machine as it is. So, you know, if, if it corrupts the registry and it doesn't boot up or doesn't work anymore, I'm no worse off than I am now because I can't do anything with this machine. If I screw it up, I'll just blank the hard drive, okay? 
and uh, reinstall Windows or something. Maybe a newer version of Windows than freaking XP. So, okay, do you still want to promote this user? Yes. All right, so let's quit out of this. Um, again, we have to go through quit again, and some different different menus, different ways to quit. You got to read them. Okay, so we want to write the changes. Do we want to write them? Default is no, but we're going to put in a Y and we're going to write it. Yes. Okay, do we want to run again? No. Let's pull the disk out and we'll reboot now and see what happens. Control Alt Delete, the three finger salute. Good old Windows XP. One of the best versions of Windows that what that Microsoft ever made, but it's pretty long in the tooth these days, so, you know. I've actually gotten quite used to using 10 and kind of liking it. Okay, so, control alt delete again to log in. And we still got this screen. There's a way to make that go away, though. Okay, so here we are. Um, we've got this guy um, logging in on this computer. Now, if it's trying to do a network login, you can just do um, a dot and backslash um, up here, and then the username, and you can get you can log into the physical machine if it's trying to do a network login. Fortunately, it's not trying to do a network login, it's trying to do a physical login to the machine, so we're good. Now, I have blanked his password, so in theory, all I have to do is press enter. And we're in! Hey, look at that! We are in! And if this guy's administrator now, which he should be, we should have the ability to, well, basically be God on this computer. And do whatever we want to. We can get rid of that splash screen that comes up before the login. That's you just edit the um, the local system security properties, and you can get rid of that. Or you can edit the registry either way. Or turn the machine into a home computer. Take tell it it's no longer on a business network. Just tell it it's a home computer. And um, it's it's for home use, and that login splash pre-login splash screen will go away. Cancel. I don't know what it's uh, trying to connect to the corporate network. I think so. I'll have to I'll have to re get rid of all that corporate networking info and set up the wireless for connecting to home networks. And uh, yeah, but hey, I'm in. I mean, I own this computer now. It's mine. It no longer belongs to XYZ Mega Corporation. It's mine. I can do with it as I please. I have admin abilities. I'm God. So, anyway, I have done this to a whole boatload of laptops in the last few days that I got on that uh, uh, scrap pickup, which I think I put a link up at the top earlier. Um, I also have one in the description or you know, of this video if you want to see that video, too, where I did the scrap pickup. So... Let's try to connect to my Wi-Fi network, but yeah. So that's basically all there is to it. Now, you know, you're in. And if you have any kind of basic computing skills at all, you can set this up any way you want it. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with the XP machines. They're pretty old. I might be able to upgrade some of them to a newer version of Windows. Uh, they don't have a lot of RAM or very big hard drives. I don't know what exactly what I'm going to do. I may sell them for 10 bucks a piece at a yard sale. I don't know. But, you know, anyway, I did this with all the Windows 7 computers, all the Windows 10 computers. Um, some of them are really nice. A lot of i5s. One really nice i7 that may be my own personal computer from now on, because it's a really nice laptop. Got a lot of RAM in it. Big hard drive. It's nice. So, um, but anyway, I hope you found this interesting. If you find yourself in this position where you have a bunch of laptops that used to belong to somebody else, you got them legally, I hope, and you want to make them yours. This is how you do it. So, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video interesting, educational, informative. Give it a thumbs up, give it a like, and subscribe to see future videos. There will be more. 
press that little bell icon that YouTube makes you press to be notified when new videos come out. And thanks a lot for watching. Bye.